Hi and welcome to a British audio file. If you don't know me already, my name is Taron. I'm going to start with a bit of a revelation. Since starting this channel, the best speaker I've reviewed is the ATC SEM 19s. It's the only speaker I felt that sounded a little bit better than my Proact Response 1 SCs. Now it didn't get an outstanding because it's quite demanding of amplification and for a speaker that's relatively large for a bookshelf speaker, it's a little bit bass shy, but in every other regard, it's been pretty much unsurpassed. I've been listening to that speaker in a full ATC system for the last few weeks, which included the ATC P1 power amplifier and the CDA2 Mark II CD player, DAC and preamp combined in one unit. And I've also been listening to the active version, the ATC SCM19 actives that you see behind me today. Is it possible that the active version could be even better than the passive version? Let's find out. The ATC SEM19 actives cost £4,375 in the UK. They are available in cherry, black ash, satin white and satin black. Many would describe it as a floor standing speaker, but the actual internal cabinet volume dedicated to the drivers is the same as the stand mount passive speaker. The bottom section is used to house the amplification and the analog active crossover. There's no DSP digital to analog jiggery pokery going on here. It's a pure analog system. I think of it more as a stand mount speaker with an integrated stand that houses the electronics, but then I've been accused of looking at things from a left field perspective before. The SEM19 actives measure 980 by 370 by 344 millimeters and weigh a whopping 31 kgs. That's 38.6 by 14.6 by 13.5 inches and 68 pounds for those who prefer imperial measurements. ATC build all their drivers in house. The tweeter is a 25 mil or one inch soft fabric dome featuring their dual suspension system. This reduces rocking modes, giving it a more pistonic motion, reducing distortion whilst negating the need for ferrofluid cooling. The midwoofer is a 150 mil or six inch SL driver. Instead of a dust cap in the center, we have the cone from ATC's famous three inch mid-range unit. It actually decouples itself from the surrounding woofer cone to play the mid frequencies in a pseudo dual concentric arrangement. All ATC models from the SEM19 passives and above incorporate ATC's SL or super lineal colossal magnet structure. There are various things that ATC have done to lower distortion in these drivers, which I discuss in detail in my SEM19 passive review. There's 150 watts of class AB amplification on tap for the midwoofer and a more than sufficient 32 watts for the tweeter. The analog active crossover deploys second order filters. I just want to take a moment here to explain the differences between a powered speaker, an active speaker and a DSP active speaker. There's quite a bit of misinformation out there and I don't think that this topic is that widely understood. I did talk about it a little in my Triangle Alara review from a couple of weeks ago, but I think this is worth reiterating. A powered speaker is a speaker that has built-in amplification. The Triangle Alara's had built-in amplification and so do the ATC SEM actives. They are both powered speakers. The active part relates to the crossover itself and the nature of the crossover. In a traditional hi-fi system, the crossover occurs in the signal path after the amplification. It's normally placed within the speaker and its job is to filter the high frequencies to the tweeter and the mid and low frequencies to the mid woofer in a two-way design. It's called a passive crossover because it's made up of resistors, capacitors and inductors. Those are passive devices. They do not require their own power to operate. That's where the passive term comes from and they just simply allow the signal to pass and do their job. In an active system, the signal is divided up before it's amplified when it's still a small signal. And it's done by active electronic components such as transistors and diodes 
hence the name. Now it is possible to mess up an active electronic crossover, but if done correctly, this is the technically superior approach. I've asked numerous speaker manufacturers over the years and they've all confirmed this. Now it's too much to get into here, so I'll just list some of the benefits. Smaller signal losses, reduction in non-linear distortions, better phase coherence, better implementation of higher order crossover slopes, and better coupling between the amplifier and the driver itself. All that translates to a cleaner and more dynamic sound if it's done properly. So that's what we have here with the ATC SCM 19s, an analog active crossover. What about something like the Bucar A500s that have a DSP active crossover? Well there, the crossover is placed even earlier in the signal path within the DSP engine of the system itself. And that gives the manufacturer even greater control. They can play with the phase alignment of the speakers within the digital domain. They can manipulate the frequency response and depending on the position of the drivers on the cabinet, even change the dispersion pattern of the speaker. The downside is that all analog sources connected to that system have to be converted to digital, run through the DSP engine, before being converted back to analog again. And some people feel that the degree of manipulation that happens within the digital domain robs some of the music integrity. Before I start talking about the ATC SCM19 actives in terms of sound quality, I just want to give you a bit of context. Take something like the Amphion Argon ones that I reviewed on this channel a couple of months ago. Now for 12 or 1300 pounds, that's a cracking little speaker. It does pretty much everything well. Given its size, it has good dynamics, good bass extension, and it's a clean sounding speaker. You can clearly hear the leading edges of notes and there's a nice little decay present as well. It even sound stages and images beautifully. So what do you really get when you step up to the best speakers around two, two and a half K? Something like my Proax or the passive version of the ATC SCM 19s. Well, you get more of those characteristics for sure, but the main difference is how fleshed out the music is. Every musical note has an attack, a release, that's the middle part, and a decay. And it's that body, that middle part of the music, which has a lot more texture and tone and gives you a little bit more richness. So how do the 19 actives compare? Well, if you set them up right, and I'll get to that later, they're performing at another level again. There's the clarity for starters. All those tonal characteristics that I just spoke about, they're present in the passive version. You can clearly hear them in the lead vocals and lead instruments, but in some of the accompanying instruments, well, that's a bit more of a strain. That isn't the case with the active version. There's much better instrument separation, and it's only when you get to really complex mixes that that quality is lost, and that's really the preserve of systems at much higher price points. Then there's the bass. Not only is it tighter and faster on the actives compared to the passives, it hits harder and it's more dynamic. Now both of these speakers roll off at the same point. They're minus six dB down at 54 Hertz. So if you want a full range sound, you're gonna to need to add a subwoofer. I criticize the passives for being a little bass shy, but the extra weight in the bass and clarity means you can hear low level bass information better on the actives. So it isn't so much of an issue. If you think that the dynamics were impressive, I think the micro dynamics are even more impressive. Musical notes have little variations in amplitude that give some texture. And this is captured much more effectively on the active version of these speakers, giving you much closer to the kind of presentation that you get when you listen to live unamplified music. The rest of the presentation between the passive and the active versions is very similar. They both have a very natural sound. They image and sound stage very effectively, and they have a nice extension and refinement on top, even if they aren't quite as sparkly as my Proax. And there's a great sense of immersement. You feel like you're within a 3D sound stage. If you're wondering what happens if I change up the amplification on the 19 passives and whether I can get it closer to the performance of the 19 actives, 
The simple answer is no. Don't get me wrong, most of my listening was done with the ATC P1 amplifier because that's the exact same amplifier in the actives that's used to drive the midwoofer. But I did try it with my Hegel H160 as well. But that drove them fine and sounded a little bit thin in comparison to the P1. I also tried it with my Exposure 21 Pre and 18 Super Mono blocks. Now that was much closer to the performance of the P1. Which one you'd prefer is going to become a matter of personal taste. The fuller, richer sound of the Exposure or the more punchy, grippy sound of the ATC P1. None of those combinations could match the performance of the Active 19s. As your system gets better, the position of your speakers and the position of yourself relative to the speakers gets more and more critical. And that was the case with the 19 Actives. If you place them too close to the walls, all those benefits that I've just described over the passive version, they're gone. And if you place them too far away from the walls, they get a little mid-centric and a little bit forward in their presentation. Get them right and these speakers simply disappear. I had them a good meter, just over a meter away from the wall behind them. That's measuring from the front of the speaker to the wall behind the speaker. And in terms of toe-in, well, eight out of 10 speakers wind up in the classic toe-in position where they're pointing on axes just beyond your shoulders either side. That was the case with the passive version. With the active version, I required less toe-in and I'm sure that's down to the fact that they've got better grip and control. And what that allowed me to do was maintain a rock solid central image, but get a slightly wider sound stage. The 19 Actives will play very well at low volumes because they're excellently driven and they'll play very loud. I tested them to 90 dBs because that's all I can stand and there was no hint of compression there. But they're not really suited for the near field. You need to be at least two meters away from these speakers for them to sound coherent and they need to be away from walls so they're not really suited to small rooms. I'd stick to middle-sized rooms. Now people ask me quite sensibly what do I mean by a middle-sized room. Something with a footprint of around 15 square meters to up to about 30 square meters as a max. They're not the biggest speakers so if you've got a massive room you may want to look at something higher up ATC's range. These speakers have built-in amplification so that's one major job taken care of but they are demanding of source material and source equipment. So make sure your CD player, streamer, DAC, turntable, whatever you're using is up to standard. They won't tear your ears off, but if you wanna hear the full potential of the system, you need to make sure you invest the appropriate amount of money in your source equipment. They only have an XLR connection. So you're either gonna to have to run an RCA to XLR cable to them, but because the cable lengths are likely to be probably in excess of three meters, I'd recommend that you choose equipment that has a balanced connection from your source component so that you can run a proper balanced XLR connection and that'll keep the noise floor down to a minimum. It's time to wrap things up. So let me make this clear. The ATC SCM19 Actives are comfortably the finest sounding speaker amplifier combination that I've heard there's something better out there, I'd love to hear it. It's for those people who want a neutral, natural presentation and want excellent technical performance. They have the flexibility in the room to set it up correctly and they have a couple of thousand pounds to throw at source components to feed it with something that it deserves. It's not for people who have continual upgrade-itis and will want to change their amplifiers and want to change their speakers down the line on a regular basis. And there are people who want a different tonal presentation, perhaps more on the warm side or more on the aggressive side. But it's unlikely that going down the traditional passive route for the same money, you're gonna get this level of performance. The ATC SEM19 Actives comfortably get an outstanding from this channel. Well, that's it for me for this episode. All that remains for me to say is please do that regular social media stuff hit the like button, share it. And if you like what I'm doing with this channel and you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing and also check out my newly launched Patreon.
But for today, for now, a British audiophile signing off. <laughs>